Okay, permutation and combination. So I've given, I'm going to give you two examples here, one dealing with permutation, one dealing with combination down below here. And uh, it's good to list the sample space out and know how to do that. Problem is, um, in a very short time, you can get very large numbers with permutations and combinations. And with, you know, if I would, in fact, if I had just changed that 4 to a 5 in this problem and changed the first and second to first, second, third, I've jumped up to almost 60 things that I have to list. So, you, you know, to list it, we're going to keep it kind of small. So we're given four people, and in how many ways can we select first and second place? Well, first off, um, these two, we have a position. First and second mean different things. So it matters who gets first, and it matters who gets second. So if I had, say, four people, we'll call them A, B, C, D, whatever you want to call it, uh, Alfred, Benita, Connor, Dan, who know, you know, whatever, A, B, C, D. Um, if we go ahead and list out the possibilities here, you could get A gets the first place medal, B gets the second place medal, or you could have B gets the first place, A gets the second place and so on down the line and it helps to list them in order so if you forget the if you forget the formula which you will it's a good idea to list your uh, sample space out and you always want to make sure that it's listed in order so a c c a a d d a or you have some sort of organization then we'd have uh, oh, we've gotten all the a's taken care of then you could have B gets first, C gets second, or C gets first, B gets second. You could have um, BD or DB. You could have uh, uh, BD, BC, good. And you could have CD or DC, and that should be 12 of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that is correct. That's everything. And... So how I, how I knew that it was 12 is uh, I knew that this is a permutation. In a permutation, we're going to count when order matters. So it matters when A is first and B is second, and or B is first and A is second. So in how we list a permutation is something like this. Um, it could either be, well, not a, we wouldn't use a C for permutation. It could be N and then a capital P with a subscripted R. So a subscripted N, P, subscripted R. It's also list, listed as P and then parentheses N comma R. Um, either way, it depends on the calculator, depends on the textbook. And what the formula is, to kind of match it up with what we're going with, is it's N factorial. Um, the number that we have divided by uh, n minus r factorial. Okay, so in our case, our n is the number of people we had, which is four. So ours is um, four p, and we're going to choose two of them. So that would be four factorial divided by 4 minus 2 factorial. Okay, well factorial, if you're not sure what factorial is, that's that explanation point there. And that's 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, um, that's if you had all four, if you're going to choose all four of them. You would have 4 for the first position, 3 to choose for the second position, 2 to choose for the third, and only 1 to choose for the last position. But we, we can't do that. We have to divide by, there's only two positions available, which is 2 factorial, and, uh, and that's just 2 times 1. So we've got 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, divided by 2 times 1. Well, using your rule, you know, your reduction rules and fractions, with fractions, 2 and 2 reduce, 1 and 1 is 1. I mean, not that I'm crossing it out, it's still just 1. And so you're left with 4 times 3, which is 12. So that is permutation. Combination, on the other hand, very similar. In fact, I'm going to select my sample space for that. 
last problem. I'm going to copy it. Because we'll, let's read this next one. So let me extend the page here. Get it to the top. It says, given, given four people, in how many ways can we select two to serve on a committee? So now we're just going to tick, pick two of them. It doesn't matter what order they're in. A and B is the same as B and A. And so let me let, put my sample space down. There it is. Hopefully, ah, it'll let me select it in pieces. <laughs> oh, there we go. So there's my sample space for permutation and for the last problem where ordered mattered. Well, this is all the possibilities, but notice B, A, C, A, D, A, C, B, D, B, and D, C all should be crossed out because they're the same as this top row. And when the order doesn't matter, all we can go with is, you know, A and B and B and A are the same thing. So now we've only got six. And so that's, the, that's what the sample space looks like, those six at the top. Here's the deal. The formula for this is called, this is called a combination when order doesn't matter. And NCR is how we represent that. N is our total. R is how many we choose. And so it can also be, just like above, it can also be written as C comma, C N comma, parenthesis N comma R. And in terms of a formula, um, the formula looks like this. C N choose R things is N factorial divided by N minus R factorial, which gives us how many things we have or choosing. But then you also divide by R factorial. And what this is, is this, this second thing eliminates the repeaters, or how many, how many times it's going to repeat itself. So in our case, we've got four, and we're going to choose two things. So that would be four factorial over four minus two factorial times two factorial for r factorial. And so that would be four times three times two times one divided by two factorial, two factorial, which two factorial and two factorial is just two times one. So that crosses out. And let me write this two times one here. And then four and two cross out to one and two. And so now you're just left with two times three, which is six. And your calculators will spit this out to you. But let me give you an example that kind of helps explain the, the combination where order doesn't matter. So let's say we had a word. Um, let's say we had uh, uh, cookies. Okay. The word cookies, and we wanted to scramble the letters so that we could spell how many different words could we make out of cookies. And even if it doesn't make a word, if, you know, just how many different arrangements can the letter C-O-O-K-I-E-S be placed? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters. And so if you think about that, six, five, four, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven spaces. So in this first space, I could put seven letters. Now one letter's there, so there's only six left, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one, because we're going to select them all. We're not going to divide out. We're not going to see how many four-letter four words we can create with this. We're going to select every single letter. And so that's if you... You know, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one is uh, how many letters if all the letters were different? Well, it doesn't matter. This O and this O are indistinguishable. We don't know the difference between the two. They're the same letter. And there's everywhere you have, anywhere you put an O and an O, that's two positions that repeat. So we're going to have to divide those out. So you divide by two factorial. 
And so, you know, the answer to this would be 7 factorial divided by 2 factorial, and you can do the math. But let's say it was cookies with three O's. Well, the word cookies with three O's, not that that's a word, you know, that would be 8 factorial, because now there's 8 letters with the additional O, divided by 3 factorial. And so now, you know, and I guess what I'm finding is how many different words, you know, quote unquote words we're making, because some of them aren't words, just like the original word I've created here. And uh, so you could have O, C, O, O, K, I, S, E. So there's an example of one of the examples of the many that we'd have here. So hope that helps and why we're dividing out, um, why we divide by the 3 factorial and why we divide by the fa 2 factorial. It's very similar, and well, it's exactly the same, as when we divide out by this extra 2 factorial. And again, this 4 minus 2, that's dividing out our extra spaces. So back down here to cookies, you know, let's say we only wanted to choose a four-letter word, but use all the letters. So now we would have um, seven factorial for all of them, divided by seven minus uh, yeah, seven minus four. I guess seven minus three, because we're going to choose three of them. Well, hold on, I screwed that up. Hold on. Okay, I didn't mess it up. I was just I was getting late. So 7 minus 4 factorial divided by, you know, there's those O's that repeat divided by 2 factorial for the O's that repeat. And so we would have then 7 factorial divided by, we're going to take away 3 of the positions. You know, we're going to cancel these 3 positions out. And then we're going to make sure that we don't count those O's as different letters. So we're going to divide those two O's out. And so this would be, once you divide all this mess out, that would give you how many four-letter words we can form out of cookies. Well, that's it. How many four-letter words we could form out of cookies. And so really it looks like this if you think of it in Ben. So you could put seven letters here for this first position, uh, six here, five here, and four here. That takes care of this part. And then you have to divide that by your two factorial, which is your two O's. And so you could have seven times six times five times two ways, because that crosses out and leaves us with two ways of choosing four letter words out of the word cookies. All right, so that's probably more than you needed to know, but hopefully you kind of understand why we divide, why the formula works, because a lot of people just throw numbers into this thing and ha don't have a clue. It's always good to know what you're doing. Don't just dumbly pl plug numbers into a formula. I've done it a time or two, I'm not gonna lie, uh, but uh, Try to understand what's going on as often as possible. See you next time, and I hope this helps.